All right. So, okay, welcome everybody. So um, we are gonna cover uh, managing five types of hunger. And I was going, so this is something Alana talked about in her videos on the monthly mindset. And as I got into it a little bit more today, I decided we're gonna go through two of the categories and then we'll hit the other three categories next week because it's kind of a lot to go through in one session. And I really would like everybody to have a chance to talk about it as you know what I mean? So we can kind of discuss how it works for you personally and kind of getting through it. So we'll start with that and then we can get into our food labels. And then I know we had a question from the group that we'll cover today that deals with nighttime snacking. So we'll hit all three of those things today and uh, get through it. Okay, so I took a lot of notes today because I didn't want to forget anything. She had so much information on that video. Um, so there's five types of hunger that she has found in her practice. So Alana is a registered dietitian. She has a practice in LA uh, and she teaches through UCLA and her practices through UCLA. Uh, so the first one is physical hunger, sense hunger, like the senses, uh, touch, feel, taste, uh, emotional hunger, mind hunger, and sleep hunger. So today we're gonna talk about physical hunger, and sense hunger, okay? So physical hunger is the only one she categorizes as a gradual, you know, onset. It's not something that's generally sudden. It's something that gradually comes on. And one of the things she really stressed was kind of how we talk about our physical hunger. Like maybe we didn't eat enough, we then didn't drink any water, so now we're coming into dinner late, and we start using the verbiage of I'm starving, right? So that's like a big <laughs> hang up with her. We're not really literally starving. We're hungry, right? We're off balance. Things aren't going all that great and we want some food. But when you talk about it in a way that it's starving, it gives you this urgency that you don't necessarily have to add to the, to the problem, right? You're just kind of fueling the fire of the situation to then make yourself feel more anxious. Like, oh, I've just got to eat whatever's in front of me. I've got to get to this thing because I'm starving. And it's funny because I, we do this, we say it all the time. And we need, and so like, it's one of those things where I've consciously been like, I'm not starving. I'm hungry. I'm ready to eat. I'm going to have this glass of water while I figure out what my plan is, right? And that's exactly kind of how she goes through things. Have your glass of water, look through the kitchen, figure out what you can have and make some good choices so that you're not just grabbing any single thing that's right in front of you, which is also obviously why we meal prep, why we have things on hand, you grocery shop to have availability so that the first thing you see isn't, you know, isn't necessarily off your plan. It could be the thing you prepped for. It could be the bag of veggies you have sitting there. It could be, you know, the chicken tikka masala that you made this weekend and it's sitting there waiting for you to eat it. It was funny because yesterday I was going through the fridge and I'm like, there's still chicken chili left. I'm like, okay, that's what I'm having for dinner. Cause I'm like, I can't believe there's still food left in here. I thought everybody had ate it, but it was back in the corner. So uh, you have those things ready so that you can eat them. So with physical, um, you know, you might feel blah, you might have a low energy level, you might have, you know, uh, stomach pangs or you kind of that growly feeling. There's, there's definitely physical onset with it. And you, you know, that's the thing you're noticing. So that is our type category number one. Okay. And then, oh, so sorry, she also goes through how to manage physical uh, hunger. So first, drink water, right? Second, veggies most, always adding those veggies into things and making sure that you are getting your proteins in at your meals because the proteins are the things that help with, uh, satiate you, to help you last longer in, in hunger. Uh, or in feeling full so that you're not hungry as quickly. So make sure you're not shortening or, you know, shorting yourself on those protein um, portions in your meals. 
and then um, adding FFCs where you need it. So, you know, some people find uh, that they like an FFC with dinner and maybe it's fine to not have it at lunch. You can move around things, try it, track it and see, see how things are going. And maybe there's some days where you just need a little FFC at both those meals and things are fine and you get to the next day and it's fine, right? So you just kind of have to go with how you're feeling about things and what's happening. All right, so uh, let's talk about physical hunger for a little bit. I, I'm, everybody I'm sure has felt it, <laughs> understands it, but there's gonna be, this is one of those things where we have all the controls and so how do you manage your physical hunger? How, how have you, like maybe in the past, I used to be a person that got hangry. It felt like it went zero to 60, but it really was, a, you know, an onset. Like I could kind of feel like, okay, I didn't have something. And then the closer we get to, you know, the further away from the food I got, the more hangry I got. But how do you manage those things now? Feel free to unmute if you'd like to talk. <laughs> I keep like a little bag of carrots in the refrigerator. So if I'm like, like you say, I mean, I might can be, my mind can say, yeah, you're hungry, but maybe you just a little snack. So I just grab them and put some lemon and uh, chili powder. And oh, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll have I'll have a snack on that. Or yeah, I love I love celery. My daughter's like, you look, you act like a rabbit, but I love celery. <laughs> <laughs> But that's what I, I mean. That's what I would uh, snack on for emergency. Yeah. That's a great one. Yeah, veggies are always a good option, right? They're just that's the easy snack. Anybody else want to share? I'm I'm pretty much like you. Like I will get to that point, and I'm like, okay, like water. Um. Like I do, I do my best to always have like a glass of water, like filled, even when I'm not drinking it. Cause I usually drink a full glass pretty much at once, but so I'll have it there waiting. And then, yeah, so I will drink water if I get like, if I start getting feeling like that and then figure out, yes, what am I, what am I making? I need to get this going and, and then do my best to just stick with that. So yeah, it's really kind of talking yourself off the ledge a bit, right? <laughs> like you're just kind of like, I, I just need to bring it down. Let's make a plan and then execute the plan. And like today, Mariana, you had those yogurts. Uh, what was it called? Two something. Two two good. Yes. So I saw those at my grocery store and I'm like, okay, I'm going to try it and see. And I had one of those in there today and I needed a snack and I needed a protein and so I'm like, ooh, I'm going to try it. And it was really good. I liked it. Yeah, they're really good. What yeah. flavor do you have? I did coconut and then I have a vanilla still. Nice. Yeah, those are the two I bought this week as well. Yeah. They were very tasty. So definitely having those options available, something that's quick and ready so that when you are there. And then obviously on the go, I pretty much always have a beach bar in my purse. Um because it's just, it's easy. And I find it easier than even dealing with stopping anywhere, right? Like most of the time when I'm out running errands, I just kind of want to get things going and done and get to it all. So it's like, I've just got water and a beach bar and that'll get me till I can get home. <laughs> Before the pandemic hit and I was like driving all over the place and like meeting with stuff, I would always, cause I'm like the person similar to yourself. It's like zero to like, I'm going, I'm like so hungry. It's not even funny. And I would keep um, raw almonds in my car. And that's what I, cause I always have water on me. I'm like forever with my, yeah. my water bottle. Um, but I never always had food. So I made sure that I kept raw almonds in my car so I could snack on those. But now that I'm home all the time, it's usually just keeping veggies in the refrigerator, like just quick go-to that I can grab and eat, whether it's baby carrots or green beans. Um, and that's how I gauge if I'm actually really hungry. Like I'll start with the water. And if that doesn't work, then I'll go to the refrigerator and I'll reach for the vegetables. But if I'm like, oh, I really don't want them, then I know that I'm just trying to like, find something else and I just leave the kitchen because it's not going to be helpful. 
Right. Yeah. It's, it's funny because like with my kids, I'm always like, have an apple. And they're like, I don't want an apple. And I'm like, then you're not hungry. So leave the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really call me. I say that all the time, Deanna. <laughs> do, do you? <laughs> yeah, that's, then you're not hungry. If you really don't want it, then you're not hungry. Exactly. <laughs> I always oh. used to find that nuts would help me in between. But now with this diet, sometimes I can't get the nuts because I've already had cheese or avocado or something, and that's a blue, so I can't have it anywhere oh. else. Yeah, and it's tough. It it is. Yeah, you have to find other things to uh, fill in. You, you um, Tina, you said something before. What is FSC? Oh, what sorry. So uh, when you're on the to be mindset plan is the other nutrition plan, and that's a fiber filled oh. carb. So essentially, it's a yellow. It's the same oh. stuff that's on the yellow list for the most part. There's a few differences, but not major. Um, and it's a fiber filled carb. So something that's going to keep you full longer. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah. And can I ask you one thing? Yeah. Um, they, they count beans as carbs, not protein. How come? Well, if you're on the vegan or vegetarian plan, it's a protein, but if you're on the regular plan, it is a carb even though it's, it's a really great carb because it does have protein and it does have a lot of fiber. So it helps keep you full, but it is considered a carb. Yeah. Cause we made a casserole tonight and we had black beans and rice and vegetables. And I'm going, but there's no protein. But to me, the bean is a protein. Yeah. So. And with rice, it's a complete protein. And if you were on like a vegetarian plan, then that could count as a protein. But um, yeah, no, on the regular plan where you're also having meat. So you, you could sub in cauliflower rice for the rice in casseroles too, to see if how you like that. Um, the texture mm -hmm. usually stays pretty good. You just have to change your water ratios probably, depending on if you're cooking the rice in it or not. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then you have to add some kind of protein to that meal too. Yeah, so you didn't have happen. any protein in the meal? Not in that meal. Oh, okay. So it, I don't, you know, I should, Sue, are you like, I don't eat vegetarian, <laughs> so I'm not well versed. <laughs> and that. I've seen you sometimes where people say like, if you eat meat most of the time, it's like you, you still stay on the regular plan. You have to yeah. be vegetarian yeah. most of the time to start counting your beans and rice as proteins. Is that right? I think I think Autumn said, and I'll I'll look this up again. I think she said if you eat meat at least three times a week, you should follow the regular plan. And I've got that written down somewhere. Yeah. I I honestly don't eat a lot of beans or rice or anything, so I'm really challenged. I actually started eating chicken again just because of it. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll look it up. Yeah. Kim, did you have something you wanted to talk about? Just it. Uh, no, I think you guys hit hit all of mine. Okay. Um, so I I I will grab a handful of nuts between classes. Like if I just don't feel like I can make it between you know my morning classes to lunchtime, and that that works well for me because I don't have a lot. Of, I have like two minutes to go grab something and go, and I can't. I don't take the whole bag. But otherwise, if I tried to do it at dinner, I would eat a cup of nuts instead of, you know, I would be way up my servings if I ate when I was really hungry, but yeah. And the beach bars I, I do and uh, yogurt I do, but it's hard when you're really hungry though. Well, when you think, when you're telling yourself you're really hungry when mm -hmm. you're in that mindset. Right. Yeah. That, and that's the key, right. Is kind of bringing it down. So you're not in that phase of, I absolutely have to have whatever's in front of me. I can, I have a few minutes. I can figure this out. I can, you know, still stick to the plan or get a few things together and make it happen. Definitely. Another thing I keep on hand is lunch meat. Like I'll just go to the fridge and like eat a couple pieces of lunch meat and go about my business. Yeah. which my husband finds extremely bizarre, but it's fine. This is fine. <laughs> Not at all. I used to do that. <laughs> it's so yeah. good. Just grab it and go. 
And just on a side note here, because I'm hearing a lot of snacky, right? And depending, you know, that's another thing too. Sometimes when we just do just enough or just have a little bit here, then we're back again in 45 minutes or an hour or whatever. So, you know, it's also trying to figure out a plan where you can kind of get a meal in if you can so that you are satisfied then for a, a decent amount of time to get to the next meal. Cause I know like sometimes when I try to shortchange it, like I'm like, I'll just have a little of this and then that'll get me through, but it's never enough. And so then I'm back again, but now it's only an hour till dinner. And it's like trying to, you know, it's like you kind of in the shuffle in the day and then you feel like you're kind of grazing a bit and you probably end up having more than you'd originally planned if you'd just had the meal. So not, mm. not saying, you know, you guys are doing that, just it, it kind of, that's one of the things that, um, you know, we talk about with snacking in general, it can, you know, if you haven't eaten enough during your day, that's where a lot of nighttime snacking comes in too, right? Because you're just, your body also wants to make up for what you didn't get in the day. I mean, uh, if I'm, sometimes I just make like the quickest meal that I possibly can. And, and it used to be like a couple of flour tortillas with some cheese in the microwave for 35 seconds. And like, at least now I'm doing things like, you know, I'll have a bag of rotisserie chicken and a bag of prepackaged salad, or I'll fry up a couple of eggs and have Dave killer, Dave's killer. Something really fast. If I'm really like feeling like I can't wait 30 minutes for, to put a meal together. Yeah. Yeah. Great plan. The thing that helped me the most without snacking, so I used to follow the um, the containers like three years ago. I was, I mean, I lost a ton of weight. I was really great. Um, I was very, very particular about the containers for the full 80 days, but I learned it and then it just became like second nature. Um, after that, I followed a very strict macro program where um, I did like the 80 days session the meals, but with four meals a day, when you covered all of the protein, the carb, the fat, um, and then the vegetables was a separate. Um, but if I followed the four meal a day and did eight every single four hours, um, I would not have cravings during the middle of the day. And that would help me schedule so I wouldn't be so snacky. Yeah. And um, that helped me and still helps me. Yeah. And I think, that, yeah, I totally agree. And it's like, sometimes you have to figure out what, what, how many meals a day you are, right? Because I like time nutrition you're eating all the time, but like, I felt really good on that plan, but I can't go to just three. Well, I can, so far I have not found it enjoyable to go to just three meals, right? Which a lot of to be mindset is the three main meals and only snack if needed. So it's like, I find that happy medium too, when I'm at four meals for sure. And they're all pretty well balanced. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, let's, let's go on to our next uh, category and then we can talk about that one. So this one was really interesting because I'd never thought about it like this. So this is the sense category. So your sense hunger. Um, so how many times have you seen a food and now you're hungry, right? You've uh, heard, maybe you heard popcorn, maybe you heard the sizzle of a steak and you're hungry. <laughs> Uh, someone asks you to pass the plate of, or the pass the bread or whatever, and you can feel that the bread's warm and it's going by. And of course you probably get some smell in there too, right? As it's wafting past your face. So all of those things can create, can trigger that hunger feeling, right? Not necessarily that you actually are hungry, but it triggers that I want this food. And so, and the other piece, uh, the other thing she talks about with sense is FOMO eating. So maybe you're in a group setting and somebody's having something really good and that's not what's on your plate, but it's on their plate. So you have some FOMO around it or everyone's having cocktails. And so then you want to have a cocktail. Um, and then also uh, the companion eating. So like you... <laughs> Like if you don't share this meal together, it's going to be offensive or, you know what I mean? You, you, this meal is going to bring you closer together. This meal is creating a moment, right? So that's also another reason why you may have things or feel hunger or want to be in that moment. So I thought all of those are pretty, 
pretty fascinating just because it's, you know, that's a, that is a sense of hunger that happens a lot, but I hadn't really thought about it as a category or, you know, you think about emotional eating and things like that, but it really does happen a lot. And especially, I know I dealt with this when I was in an office all the time, someone brings something in and then you've got the food pushers you got to try this, you you know what I mean? Or, or maybe, you know, there's a moment in the break room and so you go see what's happening, you smell what's happening, you see the food, all of those things play into, uh, you know, our emotional or the, the sense hunger category. So the thing she talks about doing, um, and we've talked about this in a call before, is do I really need this eating opportunity? So this is one of the things where I've talked about before, where it's like, you kind of pause for a second and you're like, am I really hungry? Right. You just kind of take that pause. Am I really hungry? Is this really what I want to eat right now? Um, so she talks about it in DINTEO is her acronym. Uh, do I need this eating opportunity? So think about that. And then, uh, using the push method, as she calls it. So you're just going to kind of pass on something. Oh, that looks really awesome. But you know, I'm good for now. Thanks. Politely, you know, saying no, it's not something I really want. And then um, the other piece of it is tracking whether like how you felt in that moment. So maybe you were somewhere and you had this sense hunger happening. You you saw the cupcake and you ate the cupcake. So track it and be like, I ate the cupcake because I saw it. Cause that's helpful information for later on down the road. Okay. As you're, you know, fine tuning things and figuring out how things are going. And then the other piece I'm just going to add in because this is kind of how I live my life. And that is, you know what, if it's something you're really going to enjoy and it's a moment you're in and you want to do it, then enjoy it and do it and be a part of it, right? It's just, you have to feel empowered in whatever decision you make. You can't say no and then feel bad about yourself for saying no or worrying if they're gonna worry that you said no or worrying that they're somehow gonna be offended. Just be nice about it. No, thanks, I'm good. And then be okay with that and like feel empowered in the decision. And the same as if you say yes, right? Feel empowered in your decision to enjoy the food that someone brought or had or was in the break room or was happening. And then move on to your next meal, right? Move on to the point where you make a great decision for your next meal. So things are back to normal. So, okay, so let's talk about sense hunger. <laughs> Has anybody heard this term before? Other than maybe if Alana's brought it up? No, but it immediately made me think about when you walk into a grocery store and they're pumping the smell of donuts yeah. through their ventilation system to drag you there or cookies or whatever. I mean, that's like a real thing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's a real thing. If they're if they're cooking some, and even some places don't aren't even, they don't even bake the stuff there, but they're still putting the smell into the into the front of the stores. Yeah. So um, I have I, I have believe had, it. well, I have relatives that that worked in grocery stores. So I mean, and they they re they really do that to bring you to um, to buying it. But yeah. So, and, and the same thing with like the, um, I get lunchtime, uh, they used to have the, in the grocery stores, they used to have the places where you can go and get, get your food already pre-made, you know, they don't have those anymore, <laughs> but, but, you know, you would smell like chicken wings and all sorts of stuff. Or when you're watching television and a commercial comes up, if you don't pay to get rid of those. And it's for a food ad. And all of a sudden you're like, you know, I really do kind of want a burger right now. <laughs> I didn't, but now I do. Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it's the same idea, right? Pause for a second to really decide 
is this really hunger? Is this like something I really want right now? Or is this just getting caught up in the moment? There is a um, crispy, I don't know if you guys have crispy cream donuts, but um, oh my God, you can smell them like a quarter mile away. If you're stopped at a stoplight <laughs> and there's one in the shopping center, it's like, I mean, you, you don't have to be hungry at all. You could just go in and eat a dozen of them. Like, it is so <laughs> hard. It is so hard. I don't even go to the shopping center anymore. <laughs> well, yeah, and they have the sign, too. Hot, fresh, when they're really hot and fresh. Hot now. Oh, yeah, sorry. I, my husband's like, I fix those signs. It says hot now. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I know my daughter was like, they're giving us free donuts at Krispy Kreme every Friday for every A they have. I'm like, can't they give you like an orange, a banana or something? And she's like, you're kidding me, right, mom? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> my donuts, really? No, I know. Yeah, it's funny because our grocery stores here now do have fresh fruit for kids for while they mom shop, which is great. Like that's a total switch. Uh, used to be, I would take when my kids were little, we would go to the deli and they'd get a free chocolate chip cookie. And, you know, so now there's baskets of fruit so they can have fruit while they shop instead of the cookies. Well, Walmart here does it. They have like a basket of apples and bananas. But for the schools now, they're giving them for each A they bring to Krispy Donuts, it's one donut per A. I'm like, really? No. <laughs> Well, that's some good incentive, I guess, right? <laughs> Does anybody have anything else they want to talk about with the uh, sense hunger? And so next week, we're going to hit mind, emotional, and sleep. Sleep mm -hmm. is a big one. I am a sugar craver when I do not get enough sleep. Emotional is my worst. Is it? Oh, emotional is bad. Yep. Yeah, so we'll we'll definitely get into that one next week so we can kind of power through because I think that's a big one for a lot of people. For me, like the seeing, you know, <laughs> you know, I for 20 years I got I stopped at 7-Eleven every morning to get a Coke. And then then later, you know, when I realized I shouldn't have all that sugar by itself, then I added um, you know, cheese, peanut butter and cheese crackers because I thought it would balance out some of the sugar. <laughs> So I had those two things for, for a long time. And when I tried to break that habit, I had to drive a, a different way to work. So I wouldn't wow. pass four 7-Elevens on my way to, you know, the 10 miles it took me to get to work. I had to like go through a, for, for like six months before I could, um, where I felt like I could resist the pull of the 7-Eleven sign. So, and it's, it's, so for me, like sight is a, is a big thing and even like I can't I don't walk I had to if I was trying to lose weight I, I couldn't walk around the school and walk in the admin wing where the brownies and donuts and whatever donations or people that had candy on their desk like you know I got really good at knowing where to go so I could get those things and then I had to like back out and change all my you know didn't get as many steps anymore but yeah yeah, my office was through the break room and then out the other side. So like there was always bagels delivered every morning. And then, you know, like everybody have somebody to have a birthday or somebody to have a treat in there. And you just have to, yeah, you walk right by it. So in both of my fields, I've worked in television and on political campaigns and all they do both areas is feed you. And the reason they feed you is so you can't leave but they don't tell you that. They're just like, we're gonna bring in food. It's gonna be fantastic. And you're like, I'm getting free food. This is amazing. Um, and one of the shows I was on was Dr. Oz. And when I worked on the show, they would feed us on the show days. And the saving grace was that it was Dr. Oz and there was a very strict menu until one day there wasn't. And we got really excited because we all got instant oatmeal by Quaker Oats. 
and it had flavors. And so everybody lost their mind over these flavored oatmeal because normally the oatmeal we got was just plain oatmeal. There was like, not, like you were not putting anything but like flaxseed and maybe there was like some walnuts you could like scrounge around. But so it's just really interesting that there's very much the camaraderie of like, we're gonna feed you, but it's cause we don't want you to go anywhere. We need you here to work, you know, 14 hours a day. So that's always been really interesting. But to Kim's point, when I was on a campaign a few years back I would go to 7-Eleven, I would get a vitamin energy and a slice of pizza at an egregious hour of 7 a.m., drive to work while drinking the vitamin energy and eating my pizza because I had to balance out all the sugar, Kim, you know, like that's what you have to do at seven o'clock when you're having breakfast on the road. And then I probably wouldn't eat again until they brought food in for us because we couldn't go anywhere. So yeah, totally understand that. That I've never heard that phrase before, but it really resonates. So that's interesting. Yeah, definitely. Well, and if they're feeding you, it's like, then are you going to be the one bringing your lunch in? Because that's going to be interesting too, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it really is kind of a trap because it's like if they don't have good choices then you're kind of like you know what do you have and how do you manage it through the day well the last the last about like any campaign the last month is like horrible um but we were all living this campaign in particular we were all living in a house together so it was like the real world <laughs> and you didn't, there was no, like, I'm going to the grocery store when we get done at 10 o'clock at night because we had to go have dinner. So there wasn't that opportunity. But on Dr. Oz, I would sometimes bring in my own breakfast and then I would like hide in the green room and eat my pizza um, because I didn't want him to see that I was eating pizza because he's a doctor and, you know, we're there for health reasons. So, <laughs> but yeah, no, political campaigns and television, all you do is feed you so you can't go anywhere. And the food that they usually offer you is not the best. They, they sugar you up so you stay fueled and ready to go, right? Or carb it up. <laughs> they do. It's, it's usually, it's just like pizza and soda and yeah, they don't leave. We need you heavily caffeinated and fully loaded on carbs. And if you need a nap, here's another soda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. All right, so do we want to talk snacking first or do you want to do food labels? How many people have food labels? I know Lily's got a bottle. Okay. All right, let's start food labels. Uh, go ahead, Mariana, because you're already un unmuted. Oh, okay. So um, I was inspired. Lily and I had such a great sidebar conversation. I don't remember what day it was, but it was just so beautiful and I really appreciated that. So I just wanted to give her acknowledgement for just her her just suggestions and grace and everything. It was amazing. But in terms of nutrition, um, every morning I have almost the same breakfast. I did is um, eggs and it has spinach. And I put in um, these mushroom slices from Green Giant. I left this bottle on the counter from this morning. My husband went to throw it away. I was like, don't touch that. My nutrition happy hours tonight. <laughs> and then I top it off. I'm not a big salsa fan but I found this like fresh bruschetta. And so I put about a tablespoon, which is the serving side. So I wanted to actually just go through those labels because I thought that would be of interest. Yeah. Um, so I could make bruschetta, which I thought of you, Deanna, because you were like, if you're gonna have a sweet, I'd encourage you to make your own sweets. And I was like, I'm sure she would encourage me to make my own bruschetta, but you know, I just don't know if it's gonna happen. So this is you find it in the refrigerated section so that's a good place to start because it has to be refrigerated so i was like yes this is a win it has tomatoes canola oil balsamic vinegar garlic puree um sodium benzoid because we have to protect the flavor salt sugar basil extra virgin olive oil spices and then there's like less than 0.5 percent of some other things but the their calories is 25 per serving and one serving is two tablespoons and I probably do about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half. Um, total fat, two and a half grams. Sodium's 150 milligrams. The carbs are two. There's one gram of sugar, but it's not added sugar. It's just one gram in there. And then there's no protein and there's no other sustenance. So it's just like tomatoes. Um, I really like it on my eggs. I Eggs and I have had kind of a weird history because I didn't know how to cook them for the longest time, but 
So I top it with that and then I put these little mushrooms from Jolly Green Giant, um, which is not, the sodium may kill a small animal. It's 350 milligrams, For how but many? it's okay. Um, the serving size is half a cup, which seems a bit aggressive in my opinion. I'm only maybe putting like, I would say maybe a quarter of a green, then the rest is the spinach and then the bruschetta, but it's 15 calories and there's two grams of protein. There's nothing else really to talk about. There's mushrooms, water, salt, and ascorbic acid to maintain color. Yeah, the salt is a, a preservative. Oh. Yeah, so that that's pretty much my breakfast, which I guess it's not that bad, but I'm open. Oh, to I think that's great. That sounds like a really good breakfast to me. And the the bruschetta, I don't really know where Autumn draws the line on purple or green between, like on sugar content, because it did have sugar in the ingredients, so there mm -hmm. is sugar added to mm -hmm. make them naturally have some kind of sugar in them, but. Um, but it didn't sound like there's very much in there. So yeah, so that's, and just in case anybody is like, doesn't know, like, so if you have a store-bought salsa, uh, it tends to be a purple container because it tends to have added sugar. And then if you make your own salsa, you can have that be a green container because if you're, well, as long as you're not adding sugar, right? And now that did add oil too, which is interesting. Uh, well, bruschetta would normally add some oil. But um, so if you were to make it at home, you, it would probably be less and you could eat more. It would be, if I made it at home, it would be tomatoes, onion, garlic, olive oil, salt, pepper, that's it. Yeah. Um, I don't put vinegar in mine, but so. That's probably- It's just such an easy go-to. Go -to. Yeah. So, it, but I, yeah, so that like sound, yeah, that doesn't sound like, any, and especially the quantity you're doing, that's such a small amount. Yeah. Um, yeah. That kind of go into your green container. That's how I was treating it because I was using a fresh pico de gallo, which I know Autumn does say that that's a green. And, and I was using pico de gallo and I was like, I don't know why I'm forcing myself to eat this. I don't really enjoy it. <laughs> and I found the bruschetta and I was like, oh, well, let me try this. And then I started like looking at all that. I'm like, it's not that bad. And then I was like, maybe I'll just make my own. And I was like, who, who am I kidding? I'm not doing that right now. <laughs> so <laughs> that's been my breakfast. And it's so delicious and really filling. And I really like that because I have a um, breakfast and I, we're not, we're kind of frenemies. We don't really get along. So this has been like really exciting to do this and like, enjoy it and look forward to it. Like I look forward to this, which is nice. Yeah. No, I think so. it sounds great. And you could, um, I don't know if you add like a teaspoon in, you're frying your eggs in oil or how you're making your eggs. So there could be like- yeah, How do you make that? Um, I put the spinach in my pan and I wait till it wilts a little. And then, this is not an exact science. And then I take my eggs and I, like I mix them up in the bowl and I add onion powder and garlic powder. And then I add the mushrooms and I pour them in and I wait and then I like bludgeon them to death with my spatula. So they're like mixed in. And then when I'm done, I add the bruschetta topping once it's in my bowl. So that way I can kind of control it because I didn't want to overcook the tomatoes. Do you put oil in the pan? No. And how, how do you make the, the eggs don't stick to the pan? I think there's Teflon on my pans, which is a whole nother discussion. And I'm sure like I'm probably killing my brain cells. Alzheimer's may be on the horizon for me, but I do my best. It was a wedding gift. That's what we've got. Um, otherwise I would use a spray if I didn't. Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't yeah I have the green pans um, that we got on Amazon and it's got some kind of coating. I think it's ceramic or something, but it's sticky. It's, I mean, it's slick enough that you could do it without other moisture oil or things like that. So there are definitely pans out there that you can- If you make it fried where you don't move it, it won't stick. But if you try to scramble it, the whole thing sticks. Right, yeah, it is kind of funny, isn't it? I don't know what the science is. Maybe it's the egg yolk that makes it want to stick or something, I don't know. Yeah, no, I just, they're not, I can't make them fluffy. It, it's just, breakfast is not really a meal that I've mastered. But dinner, well, I've got you all. Like dinner, yeah. I'm good. it's just everything else. <laughs> so perfect. All right, good labels. Lily, do you want to go? Did do you have a mixer? Is that what it was?
Um, yes, I have a couple actually. So I have um, <clears throat> a creamer. Oh yeah, that pod that creamer. Pod. Yeah, yeah. So um, this is what I drank all up and down the coast when I was traveling because um, it's small and it fits in my tiny RV fridge. But um, it's 10 calories for one tablespoon. And I probably use about two tablespoons in my coffee. The older I get, the less sweet I like things, <laughs> which um, is interesting. But uh, it has one gram of fat. It has no carbs. It has no sugars and no protein. Okay. So that's, um, it's basically, uh, water, coconut cream, almonds, natural flavors, um, acidic gum, some, a couple other salt, sunflower, um, uh, sea salt and gelatin something. So that's it. That's in it. So, and it's an almond coconut creamer, but I figured if, since it was only 10, calorie well 20 for me because I used two tablespoons I figured it was pretty good since it didn't have any actual sugar in it so yeah it's that sounds like it'd be on her you know acceptable oh I'm my internet's getting unstable that'd be uh, on her acceptable list of like you know, like when she talks about coffee it's just a little bit of something yeah so that's that's what I've uh what I used and it was it's actually flavorful enough for me that it gives me enough, um, without the sugar. So, um, and then I have, um, so I'm always, you know, me, I'm always trying to find something that I can put with my alcohol, but not have all the calories. So this one is swoon mixers, margarita, naturally zero sugar. And I just ordered it off of Amazon. It came with uh, two other flavors. Um, one was like a cucumber, um, flavor and then one or a cucumber ginger and then another one was a mango flavor so um and they're and they they taste um they taste pretty good they taste a little bit artificial I guess um mm -hmm. even though there apparently isn't artificial flavors in it but um it's zero calories and uh zero sugars and zero protein again so um What's the sweetener in it um, that is a good, it just says natural flavors. So I, I don't, it doesn't say natural flavors. Well, that it says water, water is the first ingredient. Natural flavors is the second ingredient. Uh, lemon pulp is in there. Sea salt. Yeah. That's so. it? Yeah. So I figured I, I could have this and my, and my, uh, Jack Daniels or my vodka and and, you know, just enjoy the calories from whatever alcohol I put it with it. So is it sweet? So. Um, a little bit sweet, but not too sweet though. No. Okay. Well, so. I don't know what the natural, natural flavors are, but <laughs> I know, I know that's the thing. It doesn't say what the natural flavors are at all, but yeah. it says zero sugar. So I don't know. Well, don't know. definitely. But there's not an artificial sweetener listed. So, and they do have to list. Them. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. Hmm. Okay. Nope. Interesting. Yeah. So, um, this one is a Cosmo and this one is sweet. This was, this is five calories, but zero sugar. Um, and it tastes like a Cosmo. Um, I actually had to water it down cause it was way too sweet for me. Uh, surprisingly, but it, yeah, so it's five calories. It is one carb, zero fiber, zero sugars, and zero protein. And so what's, what's I figured. So this one is water, citric acid, sodium citrate, natural and artificial flavors in this one. Uh, sucralose, which is a type of sugar, but it doesn't say what, even though it says there's zero sugars in it. So isn't um, sucralose? Sucralose is the sugar, is the chem, is the sugar component of it. Um, it's a but sugar it's alcohol. still zero. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still it's zero really, calories. Yeah. They eat through it. You see it? That's another eth ethritol. Ethritol. But yeah, it's the sugar alcohols they can say are not sugar. I don't know why, but the FDA is allowed to allow, allow manufacturers to say that it's sugar free, even though it's not. 
<laughs> because it's got yeah. it's got sugar alcohol in it, um, which comes from sugar. Yeah, yeah that's wonder if well. No, this no, it. this doesn't have any alcohol in it though. There's no alcohol in this. No, it's you just, add alcohol no, to it. No, 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 no. Alcohol. alcohol, sugar alcohol. Totally different. It's oh, not. Gotcha. It's not alcohol. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. all the ones that say os at the end of it, those are all types of sugar alcohols. So it makes you oh, wonder really? how your know. body yeah. tries to burn it because with alcohol, your body tries to burn it immediately because it doesn't know what to do with it. So it still works to burn it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'd be curious. I should look, I'll look some of that up. We can discuss it next week to see how sucralose even burns. Yeah, I just, it, for me, it was too sweet. I mean, I like a, I like a Cosmo, but it was, it was way too sweet for me. I had to water it down and, and, um, and then I saw that it had sucralose and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Cause I know that's a sugar, even though it says zero sugars on there. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's not as horrible as like a mudslide, but <laughs> it's probably, um, it's, uh, my margarita is probably better for me with my natural flavors. Maybe. I would say <laughs> go with a regular margarita, lime juice, tequila, and some triple sec. <laughs> that's, that's usually what I do, but I was mm -hmm. looking for, I was looking for options that I could take on the RV. And so this is easy to stick in the RV. So, but yeah. So Willie, are those both carbonated? No, neither one of them are. Oh. No. Yeah. No, they're, they're just, yeah. No carbonation. I, I don't do well with carbonation. My huh. tummy just like floats up. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I just deal with it sometimes, but I prefer not to have carbonation. So um, yeah, no carbs. All right, good. Well, Maribel, did you say you had a label too? We'll get that and then we can talk about nighttime snacking. You'll need, oh, there you go. <laughs> I was say, you have to unmute. I have this. Uh, my daughter was the one that picked it because sometimes I, uh, I like those wraps with chicken and I like to have some FFCs more. And she likes the, be the beans, but sometimes I, I guess I overreact on the salt. So we picked the er early earthy choice. Okay. And it's only has 60 calories. But it's a weird thing because on the, on, the, on the front it says 60 and on the back it says 110. Fat zero, sodium 125, carbs 20 grams, fiber 5 grams. Protein seven grams. And I use maybe a, like less than a fourth. And I just use it on like sometimes my wraps or my salads just to give it that other kind of texture or, or feeling if I'm really hungry. Yeah. So, what exactly what is it? Is it a wrap or is it something you put in your wrap? It's black beans. Oh, it's just black. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so they're already like ready to go where you can just put them in. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that sounds like a great FFC. Um, the only thing with some beans, like when they're already done is they may have a lot of sodium added to them, but if you're not having them that often or, you know what I mean? If it's a convenient. Yeah, this one, this one only has 125, but I have maybe like half of the yellow cup. Yeah. And maybe once a week. So the yeah, whole package, I mean, option. it's a 10 ounce. It'll last me two weeks. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Kelly, let's do your label. Okay. Let me grab it and see if, if I can actually see the print on this one. <laughs> By the way, my glasses, I hope to have those by um, the beginning of next week. And so I'll be reading a lot of labels then. All right. Uh, I have, and I, this is kind of probably, I would say, um, I would consider this more of a treat. I typically do not buy English muffins, uh, but this is 100% um, whole wheat. Um, and so a uh, serving size is obviously one English muffin. But what I did with this was I made pizza. Oh, so, yeah. 
yeah. So I can't really can't recall where I got the recipe from. Uh, but anyway, so what I did and really where I should have stopped, that's the reason why I said it was a treat was I was probably supposed to only eat one, but I ate two. <laughs> so anyway, but let's see what it says. Uh, calories, 160, uh, fat, two grams, uh, the carbs, that's, yeah, probably really bad, uh, 30, so 30 each. Uh, it's standard for a yellow. Okay. Uh, let's see, fiber, four grams, sugar, six grams, protein, seven. So, but what I ended up doing was, of course, I bought, um, um, spaghetti sauce and had, um, what did I use? I used turkey meatballs. So I kept those up. I had serving size of that and it was able to, uh, do four, um, the four slices and, um, uh, some Parmesan, uh, no mozzarella cheese is what I used. And so just cooked it for 20, 20 minutes. So I typically do not make that, but I was kind of in the mood for pizza. So I was like, you know what? I'm maybe a little bit better than pizza. I don't know, but and, uh, those are English muffins are pretty good. Um, the fiber is usually not that high. So that that's, I mean, compared to like a white bread type. English yeah. Muffin. So that, that sounded good. And it's actually got a decent amount of protein in it. And, um, you've got a decent amount of fiber in it. Um, so if that was the, ser if one serving size is one muffin, then each one would be ye a yellow. Yeah. Uh, it says 28 grams of whole grains. That's good source of fiber. Yeah. So like the whole, I, I love the marketing on the front, right? Where it's like, this is how many grams of whole grain, but it really matters in ratio of fiber to the, the carbs to know whether or not it's a fiber filled carb or a carb that's going to work in a yellow container to see things. But yeah. that's like a good option. And, and actually you're bringing up the other purple green thing, which is the spaghetti sauce. So if it's homemade, you tend to not add sugar or take the sugar out and it's a green. And if you add, it's do store-bought because it usually has sugar added, then that's a purple. Yeah. So that's the difference. Yeah. It's, and it's some potatoes are canned with sugar too. So you really do have to turn your labels over. Like I think Hunt's has some sugar in some of their tomatoes. So you have to really turn your labels over so you're not buying just regular even tomatoes that have sugar already in them. I think so it's if it's over five grams. Oh, okay. Is that what it is? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's what she says is if it's over five grams. So you can find some. Yes. I like but the, I mean, one that everybody talks about. Rayos. What? Yeah. Rayos. There you go. Uh, yeah. R-A-O. They have it at Costco. I, I yeah, just make mine. That, that's the <laughs> I know. I make mine too. <laughs> yeah. That's really good sauce. But yeah. I mean that you can find them though. I know I've looked to find for other people, so. It's the same thing with ketchup. It's hard to find ketchup without sugar as well. There's only a couple brands that have no sugar and with ketchup and tomato sauce. And yeah, there's, you really gotta turn Primal your labels over. Primal so, so I still have my spaghetti sauce here. So total sugar seven is seven grams. Okay, so that would be a purple container. Yeah. Um, just grabbed my brace. <laughs> um, this is how you know I'm Italian. Um, tomato basil, and it has four grams of sugar, but zero total grams added. And the ingredients is Italian whole, whole peeled tomatoes, olive oil, onions, basil, salt, garlic, black pepper, oregano. Perfect. And what, what's the brand? Rayos. Oh, I've seen that one. Yes. Uh, Aria, yeah, it's yeah. my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, really yeah, a lot of people rave about that one. It's funny, I think about getting it, but I really, I have a spaghetti sauce recipe that I really loved <laughs> that I make. So I'm like, oh, I don't want to buy sauce, but. All right, good. So uh, let's touch on, oh, do you have one? Sorry, Beth, go ahead. Lily, have you tried these? No, I can't eat eggs. Yes. Oh, yes, um, yes. Okay. Those are, I love those. This is the first time that they were in my Aldi. They were at my Aldi. So do you guys have Aldi? We don't know. They're, they're at Costco. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, they, they very well may be at our Costco, but I don't go to Costco. 
because there's very few of them. And I shop at Aldi every single week and Aldi will like bring in random stuff. I don't even know. I don't know. They probably get it at like some ridiculous special or something. But yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, these things are ridiculously, um, they, they seem really, really good. I mean, so all they are is protein and fat. Oh, yeah. And it's just a yeah. wrap. Yeah, yeah, it's it's egg white, egg egg whole, egg white, egg whole. So I guess <laughs> more egg whites than egg whole. <laughs> Cauliflower powder, olive oil, sea salt, xanthan gum, spices, citric acid, and they have one wrap is thirty calories. Total fat, 1.5 grams, cholesterol, 45 milligrams, sodium, 100 milligrams, zero carbs, three grams of protein, or yeah, three grams of protein. I was like, well, I'm going to buy these and try because I haven't had a wrap and I can't even tell you how long. <laughs> they, they make really good breakfast wraps. So like if you scrambled some eggs or make a scramble or mm -hmm. um, use... I use two of them because they're really thin. So yeah. I use two of them at a time. Um, and if you bake them just a little tiny bit, they actually um, almost crisp up a little bit and then very flavorful that way. Hmm. So Interesting. Yeah. What are you yeah so. We bought a sauce today. Leonardo, it's called. Basil marinara. Egg wrap. It's farm to table. And it says it's only three grams of sugar, so I can count oh, that. Good, yeah, you can count with the green. Great, <laughs> you're all set. <laughs> I hate to have counted as fruit. <laughs> <laughs> I know I don't like giving up. Like I love my fruit. I don't want to use other things for it. Yeah, especially tomatoes. Right? Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> tomatoes are. I love tomatoes. I don't want to count them as fruit. <laughs> All right, so real quick, I'm just gonna, I'll, um, Amy had had a question about having, uh, she has hot chocolate at night and um, and we can cover this next week too if she wants to jump on. But so a while back I had made a series of videos that talked about how to handle nighttime snacking. And it was basically, um, there's kind of three categories. One, you're making it fit into your plan so maybe the, the two things are that either you have something that is a really low calorie option so that it's not calorically impacting your day, two, that you have that that's just part of the plan in your day because maybe your nighttime is when you want something, right? And so you make up for it during the rest of your day so you can have those calories at night. Three is just not having anything, right? No caloric impact. So um, I think what we need Amy for is to know, like, is this hot chocolate uh, something she really enjoys, right? Does she want to keep it? Because I don't really think you have to get rid of everything if you like it, right? You can figure out a way to work it in if it's part of something you want to do. Or is she feeling like it's kind of a stepping stone to get, you know, to a different place and maybe she just wants something to keep stepping. Cause I know she had mentioned some other things she had eaten previous to that, and she's kind of stair stepping to, I think, eliminating. And so it's just finding then something else to stair step down to. And I, I know she had mentioned tea was not a great option for her. And maybe it's a square of chocolate. Um, you know what I mean? It's stair stepping to something that's less volume and you know, but still chocolatey if that's the important piece. But so you just kind of have to figure out like, what does this mean in my life, right? Like, is this something that's part of my ritual that I want? Or is it something I'm trying to get out of? So let's stair step it to something else and then eliminate it. Um, we talked, she, she could not jump on today at the last minute, but we had talked over some options in the afternoon too. I think it's part of a, an enjoyable ritual that she's kind of been fading, fading out. You know, she's had a couple phases of it and uh, we, there's a fixate uh, Mexican drinking chocolate recipe that we talked about, although it's, it's not hot. Um, we talked about what the, I also, I sent her some of the whips um, mm -hmm. recipes. 
Um, we talked about, and you had suggested maybe moving Shakeology to the end of the day, making it um, a treat that way. So I think it's just part of an enjoyable routine, you know, but it's, but it want, it needs to be healthy enough to be something you can repeat every day. Right. Yeah. Did, did you send her the candy cane hot cocoa from the to be mindset recipe? No, because I couldn't access that one because it was on the monthly fix and I'm not a member. So oh. I couldn't access oh. it. So yeah. it uses a very interesting um, ingredient, which is the aquafaba, which is a liquid reserve from unsalted canned chickpeas. Mm -hmm. Never, never even heard of that. Huh. Yeah, it's a but, thickener, isn't it? Yeah, and it can be used as an egg substitute in vegan recipes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've oh, mayonnaise, okay. mayonnaise yeah. with it. Yeah, really? interesting. So, yeah. So, Deanna, I have a question about nighttime or snacking at night or eating yeah. at night. Yeah. So, if I were going to save a container, because so sometimes for me, I feel like I have to eat something so I can sleep all night. Otherwise, I wake up and I'm hungry. So, if I were to save a container, which would be the best container for me to eat before I go to bed? Boy, that, I mean, I, I don't think a veggie is, is going to get you very far. So it's probably, <laughs> mm -hmm. probably <laughs> I didn't mean to laugh. It's probably yeah. a, a yellow, of course. If a protein, uh, yeah, of a, a yellow would be my go. -to. Yeah, you, I, Everybody. Know, I would say yellow or protein, but like a protein sometimes can feel kind of heavy too in your stomach. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on how you feel after you've had it or what you're having. Like, yeah. I, and, it, and it, you know, like uh, you can your caloric, cal your calories matter for the day, right? So if, if you want to have something in the evening, because you didn't have something earlier, you're not necessarily going to throw things off. It's when you have the extra calories above and beyond your allotment mm -hmm. that throws things off. So I think you just have to play around with it and see mm -hmm. what gets you then to the morning and what's, what's good. I mean, I honestly, I like to have recharge at night. Um, and I don't know if you've, use recharge yet but like mm -mm. especially when i'm following the containers and i'm in a you know blinders on mode with my nutrition um i get a little more hungry right toward bedtime and that recharge is perfect and then i and then i'm fine till morning and ready to roll huh. i haven't what, tried that what is recharge and how do you count it so recharge is part of the performance line so it's just it, like we have recover, energize, re hydrate, and then recharge, uh, creatine. There's some other things. But um, so recharge is a 20 gram protein that is meant to be for your nighttime. You're supposed to take it a half hour before you fall asleep. And then it has proteins that I believe are a slow release or a slow absorption so that as you're going through the nighttime, that's when your body is repairing and it's useful for the repair. And it's not, our performance line is not counted in the containers unless you're having them at off time. So if like you had your recover an hour after your workout, then you would have to count it as a protein. If you have it within the 30 minutes of your workout, then it's, it's freebie. And recharge is the same way. If you have it at nighttime, um, then it's there. And it's like, to me, it feels like moon sand. If you've ever had any experience with that, it's like this weird texture. And I described it as like kind of marshmallowy tasting with a little cake batter. Um, my child didn't agree when he tried it, uh, but I, I don't mind it. Um, it's just kind Are of- these things foods or drinks? These are drinks. So it's a powder, like a, like a protein powder, right? That you just put with oh, water, okay. shake it up. Some people will blend it with ice and stuff. I just shake it with water and down it and go to bed. Okay. So that might be an option um, because it is, okay. you know, especially because are you doing body beast now too? Um, hammer and chisel. Oh, it'll be very useful. Yeah. That extra bump. Yeah. So recently I did find a article on the Beachbody blog about what not to eat before bed. So you should not eat chocolate, cheese, chips, citrus, or ice cream, just so you guys know. No ice cream. <laughs> no ice cream before you go to bed. <laughs> Why? Yeah. You've just arrived um, America's day with that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
do they say oh. why you know what i'll post the article it was from beach body on My there um, they're probably they're probably irritants i mean citrus would probably be an irritant it's probably things that may be more irritating to your system yeah like, ice cream too much sugar can leave you feeling overstimulated and ready for activity <laughs> so it depends on what type of activity you're looking for <laughs> Sorry. What kind of activity? Um, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's the newlywed. Um, the newlywed. <laughs> yeah. So it just says it's not very helpful um, when you're trying to get some sleep. So. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys. I don't want to keep you on too long tonight. We're already over our hour. So let's snap a picture quick, and uh, we'll uh, move move on. But thanks all for coming. This was a fun night. We had so many good things to talk about. All right, so we big cheese. Thank you. All right, and if you thank have you questions for the week, thank just, you, Deanna. Yeah, just feel yeah, free thank to you. Group so that we can bring the questions in here and talk about them. And I'll post this recording later tonight. Um, so if anybody missed it, they can see it. Awesome. Right, thank you, Deanna. Good night. Thank you, Deanna. Bye. Bye. Bye.